Welcome to our latest video on the topic of boron nitride. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe the bonding and structures that exist in hexagonal and cubic boron nitride and know how these relate to their properties and uses. You should also be able to explain the key similarities and differences that exist between these structures and the structures of diamond and graphite. Now in our last video, we learnt about the elements in group three, and we learnt that the five elements in group three are part of the P block in the periodic table, and this is because their outer electrons are in P orbitals, and each element in group three has a characteristic S2, P1 electron arrangement. The two most common elements in group three, we learnt are boron and aluminium, and these elements have very different physical properties as one is a non-metal and the other is a metal. We also learned in our previous video that the plus three oxidation state is the most stable at the top of the group. And as you go down the group, the plus one oxidation state becomes more stable due to the inert pair effect. Finally, we learned about the electron deficiency of compounds of boron and aluminium. And we mentioned that aluminium is a metal. However, it forms a small highly charged positive ion. And as a result, some of its compounds are covalent due to polarization of electrons. Now, as we mentioned in our previous video, the electron deficient nature of compounds of boron and aluminium is made use of in catalysis. For example, aluminium chloride is used as a catalyst in the chlorination of benzene. And the reason for this is because the aluminium chloride is able to accept a pair of electrons to form AlCl4- and this generates the Cl plus electrophile which is needed for this reaction. We also saw in our previous video that the electron deficient nature of aluminium chloride and its ability to accept a pair of electrons from a chloride ion and form AlCl4- is being used in the development of ionic liquids and that these ionic liquids are replacing organic compounds in uses such as solvents. Now in this video, we're gonna look at boron nitride. And boron forms a large variety of compounds with nitrogen, and these are of great interest to chemists because of the similarity between the boron nitrogen bond and carbon carbon bonds. Now in each case, there's a total of 12 electrons on the two atoms. Now carbon is atomic number six, so it's got six protons and six electrons. So therefore it's got 12 electrons in total in a CC bond. Boron is in group three, and has atomic number five. It's got five protons and five electrons. Nitrogen has seven protons and seven electrons. So in total, it also has 12 electrons. We say that they're isoelectronic because they've got the same number of electrons. Now the atomic radii of boron, nitrogen and carbon are all similar. And boron nitride, BN, has several forms which have similar structures to the different forms of carbon. So this slide shows the two different forms of boron nitride that exists. And you can see that one of the forms looks a bit like graphite and one of the forms looks a bit like diamond. Now both have giant covalent structures, the same as diamond and graphite. And as I've mentioned, they've got the same number of electrons as diamond and graphite and are said to be isoelectronic. So the first structure of boron nitride is called hexagonal boron nitride and each layer is bonded weakly to the next here as in graphite and as you can see it looks very similar to graphite but there are differences and we'll talk about these differences later in this video. Now the second structure is a cubic 3D structure it's called cubic boron nitride and this is similar to that of diamond i.e. a tetrahedral arrangement around each atom in the structure. Now in this video, we're gonna look at how the structures of boron nitride influence the properties of the exhibit. We're also gonna make comparisons between diamond and graphite. And we're gonna look at the similarities and differences between these structures and diamond and graphite. So let's start by looking at hexagonal boron nitride. Now boron nitride can form hexagonal sheets 
which are similar to those found in graphite. However, there is a difference here, because in hexagonal boron nitride, the atoms in different layers lie directly above one another, and with each boron having a nitrogen directly above and below it. Now, this is different to graphite, because the layers are arranged in graphite so that atoms on adjoining layers are not directly above one another. Now, hexagonal boron nitride can act as a lubricant, just like graphite, and this is because there are weak van der Waals forces between the layers, which mean that the layers of hexagons can slide over each other just in the same way that they do in graphite. Now, just like graphite, boron nitride has a giant structure and there's strong covalent bonds within the layers. So it has a high melting point, just like graphite. Now, in hexagonal boron nitride, there are no delocalized electrons. The electrons are localized on the nitrogen atoms as lone pairs. Therefore, hexagonal boron nitride is an insulator and it doesn't conduct electricity like graphite. Another difference between hexagonal boron nitride and graphite is that hexagonal boron nitride is polar. This is because the nitrogen atom is more electronegative than boron. So the boron is delta plus and the nitrogen is delta minus. And this is a big difference between that of graphite because in graphite you have carbons next to each other and there's no difference in electronegativity between two carbon atoms. So now let's look at the uses of hexagonal boron nitride. Well, hexagonal boron nitride is chemically unreactive. We call it inert and it can be used as reaction vessels and crucibles. However, this use does have limitations as it tends to oxidize at high temperature. Modern techniques have been developed to form boron nitride nanotubes, which form insulating sheaths for carbon nanotubes acting as conducting wires. And its use as an insulator is very common. Now, hexagonal boron nitride is also used in microwave transparent windows and as a structural material for seals and catalyst carriers in fuel cells and batteries. So now let's look at the second form of boron nitride, cubic boron nitride. And the structure of cubic boron nitride is similar to that of diamond i.e. it has a tetrahedral arrangement around each atom in the structure. Now, cubic boron nitride is the second hardest material known to man. And apart from its hardness, cubic boron nitride is wear resistant, chemically inert, and has high thermal conductivity. Now, the reason it is a very hard structure is because it has a giant structure with strong covalent bonds in all directions. Now, its hardness means it's used for cutting tools, abrasives, wear-resistant coatings, and supports for catalysts. Now, cubic boron nitride is also being used for mounting high-power electronic components, utilizing its high thermal conductivity for efficient heat dissipation. So now let's test your knowledge of what we've learned in this video with some practice questions. So here's the first practice question read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one says, carbon is the first element in group four. Two of its allotropes are diamond and graphite. A compound that forms structures corresponding to diamond and graphite is boron nitride. And the first part of question one says, describe the structure of graphite and explain why hexagonal boron nitride can adopt the same structure yet have different electrical conductivity properties. And this is a four mark question. So if you said each carbon atom covalently bonds to three other carbon atoms forming layers, you get one mark. If you said that these layers are held together by weak intermolecular forces, you get the second mark. If you say that boron nitride is isoelectronic with carbon, so it forms a similar structure, you get the third mark. And if you said graphite conducts electricity since the electrons are delocalized, but in boron nitride, the electrons are not delocalized, so it doesn't conduct electricity, you get the fourth mark. 
Now you could also say that the electrons are localised on the nitrogen atoms as lone pairs in boron nitride and are not delocalised across the whole structure. Now the second part of question one says state one use for the cubic boron nitride structure. This is a one mark question. So you could say wear resistant coatings, you could say that it's a catalyst support or it's used for mounting high power electronic components or you could say it's used in drills in industry or cutting instruments. Any of those uses gets you one mark. So here are our next two practice questions. Once again, read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. Now question two states, hexagonal boron nitride is sometimes called white graphite because of its excellent lubricating properties. With reference to its structure, explain why it has such properties. And this is a two mark question. So if you said there's weak van der Waal forces between the layers, you get one mark. So therefore the layers can slide over each other. If you said that, you get the second mark. Now question three says, cubic boron nitride is the second hardest material known. With reference to its structure, suggest why it's so hard. So if you said it's got a giant structure, you get one mark. And if you said there's strong covalent bonds between atoms in all directions, you get the second mark. So here's our final practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. Now question four says, hexagonal boron nitride and graphite have similar structures. Describe the differences between these two isoelectronic materials in terms of their bonding and structure. And it's a three mark question. So to get the marks, you need any three of the following points for one mark each. Now, if you said all atoms are the same in graphite, but in boron nitride, you have alternate boron and nitrogen atoms, you get one mark. To get the next mark, you could say atoms in the layer of boron nitride lie above each other, but in graphite, that's not the case. One mark for that. You could also say that the boron nitrogen bond is polar, but in graphite, because it's carbon carbon, there's no difference in electronegativity, so it's not polar. One mark if you said that. Or you could say that the p electrons in boron nitride are localized, but in graphite, they're delocalized over the whole structure. So any three of those points gets you one mark each. Now that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to describe the bonding and structures that exist in hexagonal and cubic boron nitride and know how these relate to their properties and uses. You should also be able to explain the key similarities and differences that exist between these structures and the structures of diamond and graphite. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radochemistry.